Welcome to Healthcare Workflow Process Improvement, Maintaining and Enhancing Improvements. This is Lecture B. Objectives for Lecture are to work with practice staff to develop a set of plans to keep the practice running to the extent necessary and practical if the EHR system fails, and work with practice staff to evaluate the new processes as implemented and identify problems and changes that are needed. Business continuity, or disaster planning, may seem like an odd topic to pair with maintaining and improving processes. But all three topics are about designing and maintaining a process that delivers the best possible care. That care and health information is especially needed in times of disaster. For example, pandemic or natural disaster, when it may be the hardest to keep a practice running. And that care and health information is still needed even if the practice itself is having difficulty. For example, a computer system crash, local power outage, or unexpected extended absence of one or more key providers, etc. When you think about it, business continuity planning is about maintaining core processes under emergency or adverse conditions, or in the absence of normal operating resources. The Business Dictionary defines the business continuity plan as a set of documents, instructions, and procedures which enable a business to respond to accidents, disasters, emergencies, and or threats without any stoppage or hindrance in its key operations. It provides guidance for times when the organization experiences loss of use of its facility, loss of its vital equipment and systems, and or loss of key personnel. While practices should consider business continuity and emergency planning in the broader sense, here we are concerned with planning necessary to provide quality care when the EHR system is down. What is affected when an EHR goes down? In short, everything that the EHR automates. As described in Unit 6, Process Redesign Leveraging EHRs automates clinic processes. For example, receipt of lab results via an electronic interface, notifications when patients are due for screening tests, and other clinical decision support, routing of prescription refills for physician approval, electronic storage of entered clinical documentation, calls to patients to remind them of upcoming appointments, and transmitting health information to another provider with a referral. Any parts of clinic processes that rely on the EHR for partial or total automation will not function for the time the EHR is down. Business continuity planning for EHR downtime is the systematic inventory of EHR facilitated processes and contingency planning for each. By contingency planning, we mean figuring out exactly how the process will work in the absence of the EHR, including both real-time patient care after the fact follow-up and getting the documentation reflecting the encounter into the EHR. Some EHR facilitated processes will be easy. For example, receipt of prescription refill requests. A possible scenario is that the sending system will detect a receipt failure and route via agreed backup mechanism, maybe fax, instead. Following this scenario, the practice, having planned ahead, will know what to expect and respond to the faxes until the system is back up. Further, the sending system will know not to send electronically what was faxed and responded to by the practice, and will resend electronically, once the system is up, what was faxed and not responded to by the practice. This is an example of an EHR system downtime contingency plan for one EHR facilitated process. The EHR downtime plan consists of a similar plan for every EHR facilitated process. Many of the processes may require paper data collection forms or worksheets. For example, data collection sheets to use in encounters that, as best as possible, help clinicians identify things that would be alerted by the EHR, possibly using patient prompts such as, I see that you are over 40. When was your last mammogram? In the next few slides, we'll discuss contents of a BCP and a framework for how a practice might go about creating one. Business continuity planning is the task of identifying, developing, acquiring, documenting, and testing that will ensure the continuity of the organization's key operations in the event of an accident, disaster, and or threat. It involves reducing possibility of the occurrence of adverse events, 
and ensuring continued operation in the aftermath of a disaster. In other words, it is the effort to assure that the capability exists to continue essential functions across a wide range of potential emergencies. Business continuity planning consists of developing the business continuity plan, forming a BCP team to write the plan and in some cases to be activated in case of an emergency, identifying the BCP objectives, defining the BCP goals, identifying essential functions and critical processes that must be restored for the organization to resume operations after the event, and developing exercises and a timetable for testing the plan to ensure that all perform as expected in the case where the BCP needs to be activated. Hopefully, every practice that you work with will have a BCP, and the EHR downtime plan can become a component of that larger plan. If not, you may be introducing practice leadership and staff to the concept of business continuity planning. An initial step is to assemble a core team to oversee BCP development, identify points of contact for organizational units, define the overarching BCP program, and develop a BCP timeline for implementation. Often this same team is expanded to direct the implementation and continued testing of the plan. The overarching objective of a business continuity plan, as in the specific case of an EHR downtime plan, is to plan for an event before it occurs, so that when it does, everyone knows what to do and has everything they need for safe and effective operation. Typical objectives of BCP plans include ensuring continuous performance of an organization's essential functions in an emergency, and in healthcare, patient safety. Protecting essential equipment, records, and other assets. Reducing disruptions to operations. Minimizing damage and losses, including loss of health information. Achieving an orderly recovery from emergency operations. And identifying alternate locations and ensuring operational and managerial requirements are met before an emergency occurs. Key goals will likely include essential organizational functions, vital systems, data and information identified and prioritized. Critical elements are capable of being recovered quickly to resume operations, i.e., processes are defined and established and staff are trained on them. Job aids such as worksheets are readily available so that staff can switch to the downtime process on a moment's notice. People know who is in charge. Backup personnel are trained. Alternate work locations are predefined, and checklists are predefined to guide the organization in responding to an emergency. Critical processes are usually defined as those processes or services that must be recovered within 24 hours after a disruption to ensure resumption of the essential function. They include all resources necessary to carry out the critical process, personnel, data or vital records, and systems and equipment. Essential functions are functions that must be performed to achieve the organization's mission. Some examples of essential functions to address include communications, vital records, systems and equipment, key personnel, alternate work sites, and testing, training, and exercises. In a practice, in the face of a natural disaster, providing patient care may not be essential. However, maintaining availability of patients' health information so that it is available to other providers probably is. Thus, EHR downtime plans should account for how information will be accessible to practice providers who may need to provide it to other providers, accessible to patients themselves, or accessible to other providers. Having data storage and hosting redundancy, or a hosted patient portal with similar features, would help accomplish this as would participating in a health information exchange. Without proper testing, the downtime plan may fail you when you need it the most. Exercises like fire drills are events that allow participants to apply their skills and knowledge to improve operational readiness. The goal of the exercises is to prepare for a real incident involving an EHR downtime plan activation. There are three types of exercises. 
Tabletop exercise involves practice staff and leadership talking through a downtime event from start to finish. Who, what, when, where, how does everything get done? Functional exercise is a walkthrough where a process is tested. Full-scale exercise is a simulated event. For example, on a Saturday, where there are pretend patients, family members, for example, and clinic staff and leadership start with the EHR, then pretend it goes down, and they resume operations according to the downtime plan like it were real. Exercises are usually followed by after-action reviews, such as those done in the military, where everyone involved talks through what happened, what went well, and what went poorly. Notes are taken so that the downtime plan is improved. Another method is called a time out of time, or toot, where during the functional or full-scale exercise, at regular intervals, someone calls time and everyone takes one or two minutes and jots down notes about what is working well and what is not working well, so that the information is captured as it is happening. This information is then discussed in the After Action Review. This concludes Maintaining and Enhancing Improvements. In this lecture, we covered Maintaining the performance gains achieved with the redesigned process, i.e., process control, Continuing to improve the redesigned process and other practice processes. Continuous quality improvement, CQI, and keeping the practice operational, or perhaps, in extreme emergencies, just keeping people's health records available for emergency services. In the event of natural disasters, pandemic, but primarily focused on EHR downtime planning.